All right, so let's try to run this. So I'm in line 14. Ah, I'm missing a colon. That's easy. And line 33. Oh, yeah, I'm missing a comma over there. End of the previous line, actually. And this again, line 69. This, oh, I see what's happened. This square bracket ended up there, should actually be here. Just going to add a space just to make it more readable. Uh, this matplot should be matplotlib. that is the end of the problems. No, NDOFS. I see. I've called it. I've left out the S. Line 82. This needs an S here. see what the error is already there. It's uh, I've left off a set of brackets. For NumPy, you've actually got to put only one parameter in here. And the way we do that is by putting another set of brackets around it. it. Stiffness should be stiffnesses. Line 106. ES. All of these are plurals. All the properties are plurals. Stiffnesses. That value should be values. 132. Forces dot values. Plural. If is not a numpy array. So maybe from before it's considering it to be a numpy array. Mm. array of f. Oh, I see what I've done. This should not be part of the loop. Indentation error. Let's try it again. Matrices are not aligned. Line 191. Um, oh, this should not be indented. I see what I've done. And I'm just realizing I made another error up here. Remember how I said CM and CK and we didn't multiply it into the element matrix? I said we would do that later. We need to do that down here. So we've got to multiply this by CM. Excuse me, CM times. And this by CK times. Right. And one other thing I realize is we didn't, uh, in order to plot it, the charts. Uh, let's just close this. Down here, I needed to add this. Okay, I just added a title for the chart, but you need to add plt.show to actually display it. So let's go ahead and run it now. And there we go. You have your nodal displacements. In fact, the plot is showing up off the screen, so let me bring that back on. Uh, how do we do this here? Yeah. 
drag this on. This is the actual plot that we set up. So you can see our nodes 1, 2, and 3. We know from the problem that nodes 1 and 2 are fixed. It's only node 3 that moves. When we look down at the console here, we see the nodal displacement, uh, and this would be for node 3, is uh, 2.3 times 10 to the minus 5. This is in inches. So it displaces positively in the x direction and negatively in the y. So it put to the right and down. Then we can see the stresses in each member. Uh, in element number one, we see that the stress is a positive stress. That's element number one is at the top. So positive means that it's a tensile stress, whereas negative means it's a compressive stress. Why are the stresses so much less in element two than element one? Well, because the area is half. I should say the area in element two is double. So you've got the same strain being put into a bar of twice the area. Stresses are less. And then the frequencies. Why are the frequencies the same? Frequencies are the same because how this bobs up and down in the x direction is the same frequency as in the y direction because, in fact, by taking these nodal displacements, we could get a resultant vector, which would be somewhere down and to the right, and it's actually displacing in that direction at this frequency, 1529, that's radians per second. Okay, if you divide that by 2 pi, you can get that in hertz. And finally, the displacement magnitude, again, this is in inches, is 0 0.00014, which is 0.14 thousandths of an inch. So if I put 200 pounds downwards, I displace in sort of a diagonally diagonal direction to the right and down by an amount of 0.00014 inches. Anyway, that's the end of this video. I hope you found something useful. I realize it was a bit long and tedious, but uh, if you have, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up so that others can get to see it. Thank you for watching. We'll catch up with you in the next one. Bye-bye.